So from the given questions, we have got uh, a question that is to expand and simplify. That is uh, another part which is important as you are working with uh, your algebraic expressions. Uh, it is important for you to know how to expand when you are given uh, two brackets of this nature. All right. Remember, when you are given a simple expansion of this nature where you are asked to expand and simplify to expand, that is to remove the bracket that you are given there. So once you are given this part of expand, think of what? To remove brackets, all right? That is to remove the given brackets. So when you've got a single term, just like a condition uh, of this nature, which is outside of the bracket, what you simply do is to distribute everything uh, that is that X outside of the bracket, you distribute into the given bracket. Each and every term has to be multiplied by that X. That is the condition. So that is X times 3X, which is going to uh, give us 3X squared. X, when it multiplies X, it gives us X squared. Remember, your exponents from your grade nine. If it is X squared and another X, all right, another X like this, it is going to be X to the exponent of three. All right, because this is one. So that is the condition there. Then X and two is simply going to give us two X. So you've expanded brackets. You're done. Do not do anything. Most of you guys, after expanding these brackets, you now factor out that x. No, this is factorized. You are now factorizing to put in brackets like this. It is now a factorization. This is expansion. You expand up to, uh, up to that part, you're done. So you have to be very, very careful in the expansion. So when you're given two brackets and uh, that is given two terms, uh, working with a binomial to another binomial like what we're given on this condition, x plus 5, is multiplying x minus 2. In this case, we are going to simply apply our FOIL method as we had it from our grade 9 mathematics. One bracket has to expand another one, like this. This bracket here is supposed to multiply the other bracket. So that is, guys, if you are working with the FOIL method, when you are considering the first, the outer, inner, and the last, it is simply that x, this one, which is the first, it has to multiply this, right? Then you see that x multiplying this minus, which is the outer. Then the inner, that is the five multiplying this, the last, this one and this one. So if you consider that, you see that it's a simpler multiplication. x has to multiply the x, that is x squared. The x to the minus two is going to give us minus two x. You are done with this x, it has multiplied everything. So the first x and x, the, the, uh, the outer, the x and minus 2. Then from there, the 5 to the x. 5 times x, that is going to be 5x. 5 to the minus uh, 2 is going to give us a negative 10. Then collecting like terms. Remember, the like terms, you're supposed to be working with a condition where it is the same variable and same exponent, just like uh, what we are seeing on this part the minus 2x and the 5x that we are having here. We have got x, and this is x, same exponent. So you can consider uh, adding these two. So that's minus 2 plus 5, which was going to give us 3. So that's 3x minus 10. Everything remains as it was before. You're done. You have expanded brackets. That is the condition. So that is the reverse is to factorize. Whatever that you're having there, the reverse will be the factorization. All right. One another question. You are given the bracket of 7m minus 2n into 3m plus 4n. Okay. So just like I indicated from the previous qu uh, question, you're simply going to focus with the first bracket. Use that to expand the other one. So the 7m is going to multiply the 3m, the first. That is uh, 7 times 3, which is 21, okay? The m and the m is going to be m squared. So that's 21m squared. Then we're going to have the 7m to the 4n, which is the part of the outer. 
7 times 4, that's positive 28. But there is going to be M and N. So it's going to be M, N. We are done. The inner part we are referring, minus 2 is going to multiply what? 3. So that's minus 2 times 3 there, which is minus 6 M, N. All right, take note. You, could, you were supposed to have written this minus 2 times 3 as minus 6 N, M. N, M, like this. But just for the sake of uh, avoiding confusion, M, N is the same as N, M. Remember that. So for the sake of simplification, if you see it properly written like this, the confusion can be, it can be limited. Rather than to say you have got uh, on the same expression, you write it as 28 mn minus 6 nm like this. For you to notice that these are like terms, you are bound not to notice in, in most cases. So to avoid that, write it there in the same manner as you have written the first one. All right? So that's it, guys. Then the last, which is the minus 2n and the the four n so that is going to be positive to uh there's this negative here to this positive that's a negative two and four was gonna be eight uh n to n that's n squared okay in a condition like this one where there is a highest exponent of two and also another highest exponent of two like this you make these terms with the highest exponent to be your first and last. You keep them as first and another one on the last term. That's how you arrange. Then the middle part of, your, uh, of the terms that you're going to have there is the one of the linear. So it must be in that order. Even if you've got a cubic, let's say there's a cubic expression that you have, another one is cubic. Let it be highest exponent, highest exponent, like uh, these are the borders that you're having, the boundaries, the highest exponent. So there is a two, there's a two. In the previous case, it was just a simpler order as we saw uh, from that part, we got something. Uh, it was uh, x squared uh, minus 7x, it minus 7x plus 10, something like that. But it was having a negative 10. I think it was positive 3x. It was supposed to be positive 3x minus 10. In this case, we had x squared. This one is a constant. So in this case, we, we, we are not worried about the order. There. To say which one, uh, the, in terms of the boundaries, we are just supposed to follow the quadratic expression ax squared plus bx plus c, the format. But once there is a square like this one, a square and a square, let those ones be your boundaries at the end in terms of the simplification. All right, so let's collect our like terms, guys. These terms that are in the middle, uh, that's 28 minus 6 was going to give us positive 22 mn minus 8n squared. You are done. So no simplification. Expand, just expand to simplify uh, this part of collecting the like terms. You are done. All right. Considering another question, which is our question number three, if we are to check properly here, we were given uh, this question three, this is 3x. Or let me just use it as it is here. Uh, they, it was simply a matter of expanding, all right? They, the first bracket simply if, has to multiply the second one, all right? As you can see, uh, we have a binomial here then the other part is a trinomial where we've got three terms one two three so in that case just apply the concept of what the this term multiplies everything in the second bracket 2y multiplies everything in the second bracket just like that so meaning to say we are simply going to multiply the 3x to 9x squared that is the condition. So it's 3 times 9, which is uh, going to give us what? Uh, that's 9, 18, 20, 7x to the exponent of 3. This is x and x is squared. So you add 1 plus 2, that's a 3. All right. So that is the condition that you are, that you'll be having when it is like that. All right. 
you move on to this 3x to the minus 6xy. So that is 3 times minus 6, which is minus uh, 18. So you've got minus 18. Then take note x, and x there was going to be x squared. Then y is just going to remain as it is. All right. Then the 3x to the last term. All right. That was going to be 3 and 4, which is 12. So that's 12x times y squared. That's x y squared. So this is the condition that you're having. You have to expand each and every term there has been multiplied by 3x. In the same manner, the 2y is going to affect the same in this in the, like the same concept. This time is 2y, positive 2y. That's a positive, this one. So that's positive 2 times. Uh, 9, well, that was going to be positive 18. Uh, x squared times y, that's x squared y like this. All right, then the 2y and this minus 6, uh, that was going to give us a negative 2 times minus 6, that's minus 12. Uh, x, take note y times y there, that's y squared. The 2y to the last term, that is 2 times 4, which is 8. Then y times y squared, that's y to the exponent of 3. So if you are to note properly, uh, according to the simplification that we have, we can see that here we have got the highest exponent, which is 3. Here we have got the highest exponent, which is 3. So these will be the guards of our expression. So you leave this one as it is. This one is at, at the ends. All right? So meaning say it was going to be 27x to the exponent of 3. Are we having any like terms? Remember like terms, same variable, same exponent. Like what we have here, minus 18x squared y, this one. Minus 18x squared y. To these 18x squared y. What is important is same variable, same exponent, x squared y x squared y so if you simplify what we're going to have minus 18 plus 18 cancels so that's a zero same thing 12 x y squared this part this 12 x y squared here we've got x y squared these two uh we're going to simplify these two alike terms so 12 minus 12 that's a zero so it it cancels again all right, so this one and this one cancels. Minus 18 plus 18, the 12 minus 12 cancels. So you are going to remain with uh, plus 8y to the exponent of 3 at the end. From a normal expansion of brackets that we are used to, that is how it's going to be like. And we have to collect uh, the like terms. So these are some of the typical questions that you can be given using this information. Try to answer as many questions as you can. Uh, try to work out as many question papers as you can. Just try to figure out how are they going to ask uh, typical questions of this nature.